phenomenal what has happened in 20 years. I want people to know the precious story, and I hope it ignites all our hearts to just be aware of the, the people God has placed in our hemisphere, in our neighborhood, in the places we travel. Tell us about the wonderful story that mm. comes out of my hometown of Peterborough right. and a little right. boy named Sean. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, this is what really ended up me doing what I do. Uh, I was 19 years of age. I went off to Bible college in search of my destiny, right? I mean, I was like most 19 years. What is my, the question, what, why am I here? What is my life about? Um, and I just knew that I had a purpose. I just wanted to believe that, but I didn't know what it was. I knew I, I was always comfortable around kids and always, I just didn't know. So I'm, I'm in Bible college, not doing very well, I might add. I, I wasn't very academic. I didn't want to even be in class. In between classes, after, after, after uh, classes, I would go downtown and I would volunteer in this drop-in center. Uh, I loved it. These kids would be coming after school. I'd organize some games. And it was just, it was exactly where I wanted to be. Unfortunately, not in class, but that's where I wanted to be. One day, a um, few weeks into doing this, uh, this little boy came into this drop-in center. And it was the most interesting thing because... He just commanded this presence. He had the scowl on his face. When the door burst open, he, he, he was just standing there. And it's like the whole drop-in center turned to look at this boy who just entered in. And, you know, his hair was all disheveled. He had this jet black hair. His face hadn't been washed, you could tell, in, in many, many days. He had this old kind of plastic, I call it pleather, a plastic kind of leather jacket. The uh, elbows were rubbed out of it. His shoes, I remember, his laces were, were spewed out all over the place. The tongue was hanging out, holes in his shoes. And his hands in his pockets and he had a scowl on his face. So I... I walked over to him. I said, hi, my name's Todd. What's yours? He said, Sean. I said, Sean, would you like to come back? And uh, we're playing some games in the back. And right away he said, no, I don't want to go back. And he just kind of stood and watched. And as the days went on, he would show up. And eventually, bit by bit, he uh, started participating with the games. So here I am a few weeks after meeting Sean, trying to break through this tough exterior. I'm sitting in, in class. And I get a call from the dean's office uh, to come down to the office. This little boy, he say, so I come down and I'm told that there's this little boy that has made his way to the Bible college. And it was 15 blocks. He knew you were there. He knew, well, he knew where I was from. He, he knew the location, but he had never been there. He had found his way um, to our college. And so I, I come up to him and, and asked how he got there. I was concerned. I walked him home because I'm concerned that his parents are wondering where, where he is. And it was then I realized that um, no one really cared about where Sean was. Mm -hmm. And I began to understand why he made his way almost every day to the college. Over the next few weeks, Sean and I became best buds. And it was interesting because my, I, was, I was searching for my own destiny. I, I can't even tell you that I was there trying to meet needs in his own life. We were like two lost boys. I was trying to say, God, what is, my pl what is your plan for my life? Why am I here? I'm not doing great in school. What is my life about? Sean just wanted... A friend, he just, he did, I wasn't even knowing what was going on, except that there was these two boys that we just became best friends. I became like a big brother. I'd walk him home afterwards. It was near the end of the season, uh, of the semester. I'm nearly flunking out of college. I'm running out of money. I'm desperate. Uh, I'm walking, it's, it's gotten late. We were playing basketball in the gym of the Bible college, and it's gotten late um, because I'm pretty caught up in my own thoughts, wondering what I'm going to do with my life. I decided I got to take Sean home because it's getting dark. It's, it's cold out. We're walking. We were walking down railroad tracks that ran somewhere behind. And in Peterborough, there seems to be railroad tracks everywhere. But yeah. we were walking down railroad tracks that weren't too far from the college because they went almost straight to his street. He lived on Wolf Street. And I remember we were walking down there. And I'm lost in thought. I'm looking up to the heavens. And I, in my heart, I'm saying, God, why am I here? I'm depressed. I'm sad. And he made his way up. And he's balancing on, you know, as kids do, walking on, on the railroad rail. tracks. And so in my heart, I remember saying to God, why am I here? What is my life about? Why? I, I don't understand why you brought me to college here just so I could flunk out. What is life about? Somewhere along that conversation I was having as I'm looking up to the stars, this little boy, Sean, tough kid. Um, we never, I, I wasn't a guy that showed a lot of affection. I was very careful with those kinds of things. Uh, we never held hands. We never hugged. We never, we were just... Two good friends, right? Buds. Somewhere along the way, he had made his way back. And while I was totally self-absorbed, he had reached up at that very moment when I was asking that question in my heart as if he intrinsically knew, and he grabbed my hand. And we had, he had never done that before. And it was, it was an epiphany. It was one of those moments that people talk about that I knew at that moment exactly what my life was about. It's just, it just like that that there would be a little boy here in Peterborough that was crying out to God for love, was saying, God, why am I here? 
somebody love me. And there was this other boy, you know, in, at that point prior to coming to college in Mount Forest, Ontario, crying out to God and say, God, what is my purpose? And God in his infinite wisdom and his, his amazing, you know, <laughs> brings these two people together. And, uh, and that night as I walked Sean, I knew exactly what it w I would do. I knew if there was a boy like this in Peterborough that there must be tens of thousands across our country. And I was going to search for him, and I was going to find him. And shortly after that, I left, and uh, I came back to find Sean. And believe it or not, I haven't seen Sean since that night. And, uh, but his purpose surely was fulfilled because this ministry has been birthed out of a little boy taking your hand yeah. who just wanted to be noticed. Yeah. And there's so many more. Yeah. I want to say that wrapped gifts the ones that we collected and others for the drive yes. have reached their destination, yes. but no toy is too late. Why? That's right, because any toys that we, um, we end up getting afterwards as well, we make sure every single child receive a birthday gift as well. Mm. So when, when this started, we had extra toys after, that came in late, typically after our parties were done, after the toys went out. Um, and that's what started the idea of let's make sure that every child on their very special day, the day that they were born, born. <laughs> that we remember them hand chosen pick gift so they know that that they've got a plan that God loves them and remembers them so every child gets a gift on their birthday as well, well. Todd this story's ruined my makeup <laughs> and uh, I'm so glad you were here on this Christmas Eve and if people want to find out more about City Kids where do they go well the best thing to do is go to our website uh, citykidswithaz.ca and you can find out everything you need to know about City Kids how you can be involved uh, and we're we're wanting to reach out to more cities across the country mm -hmm. uh, and we're looking for opportunities right now people who will say yes to to say, there's a need in my community. I want to start a city, kids. How can I do that? Uh, we're wanting to respond to that as well. Oh, I hope you'll be back next Christmas with a story that'll wreck my makeup again. I'd love to. <laughs> God bless you. Have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you.